Good evening, everybody. It's May 22nd, 2024, 6.30 p.m. I call the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. The uh, location is hybrid Zoom municipal offices at 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield. Well, I guess we have to read all this here. Certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, 20 until March 31st, 2025. All right, so we'll do a roll call starting here in the Building. Laura Pontani present. Okay. David Potter present. Okay. Adam Sokolowski present. Uh, Dave Shout present. Okay. Gabby Richard Harrington present. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> New business special permit hearing 70 North Main Street. Notice hereby given to the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. an application filed by David Nunez for a special permit for property located at 70 North Main Street identified in the assessor's record map as 196 lot 36 allowance the operation of a single unit bed and breakfast in the CRB, CVR district as provided zoning bylaws chapter 179 Two two three zero application documents available to review in the foyer of municipal offices or online at www.deerfieldma.us in calendar events. Okay, Mr. Nunes, uh, you can come up to the table or use the standing microphone. Okay, well, uh, just to be clear, I just when I drove by the the place uh, on my way home from the gym this evening, you got four meters outside. Okay, so you have a two family, and you're looking to get a three family, but that's this is asking. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm looking to rent out one unit to the B and B, an Airbnb. So I need a meter on that so I can, you know, for my town purposes, so I get an extra meter. For that. Can I just interrupt and ask that you uh, speak close to the mic? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to like really get a technology upgrade on the mic. Can you hear me now? You betcha. All right. All right. So So what's your question? Give me the question. My question is you're gonna live there? Yes. You're gonna rent a place out regular. That's correct. And then you're gonna you want another dwelling unit or unit for to rent out an Airbnb. Exactly. Okay, so that's three units, right? You got four meters, you got the landlord building meter, you got the apartment or area that you're going to live, you got another person that's going to rent there full time, and then you're looking for another unit to rent short term. Exactly. Okay, so that's different than a, than a bed and breakfast permit. You're looking for basically the ability to have three units there. I'm not looking for that. So what happens is, is when I remodeled the house, I had to have two a two family unit. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I did the first floor is just like this one room, it's small. Mm -hmm. I made that one, you know, it is an apartment mm -hmm. and my apartment. So I could get my loans and so I could get, you know, money from the bank to pay for the property. Mm -hmm. And now I have this unit sitting here mm -hmm. and I was told, you know, just make it a big Airbnb, Airbnb. Okay. So the problem that we have is I'm not against what you're doing there. I'm just telling you that we, if we're going to approve it, I want to make sure that it's approved correctly. Okay. Okay, but we don't have anything on our books that are specific to short-term rental, okay? So what we do have is how many units you have. How you rent it out is not necessarily what we're here to, if you rent it, you know, unless we get into our boarding house, we have outdated boarding house bylaw. Not may, that may be applicable, but basically what we're looking, what you're looking to do here is have three units there, which you can have a multifamily dwelling of more than two units or an accessory apartment with owner occupied in the Central Village Residential District where you are. Okay, so then what's that on? By special permit. Is that why we're here? No, what you asked for and what was advertised 
okay. was for a bed and breakfast there. Airbnb, an Airbnb. Well, yes. we don't, you can't, that's that's like a company. That's like saying Ford, Chevy. Well, a Vibro, then how about that? But that's the same, that's the same thing, sir. I just, okay. That's that's a company, but what you're looking to do is rent out a space in your building, your home. That's correct for a short term basis. Correct. Yeah. Right. Correct. Okay. So we're on the same page of yeah, what yeah, you yeah. want to do. Yeah. We just need to figure out how we're going to get there and if we're going to approve that. Okay. Okay. So, with that being said, I don't feel that asking for a bed and breakfast permit is the right route for this operation that you have there. Okay. What would you suggest? Then? I would suggest that, and I can't give you advice, like well, you can talk to a lawyer, but I would be more comfortable approving a special permit for, for a multifamily residence there. Okay. So that's what I need to do then, is apply for that. I want to do everything by the book. I, have I, no I, I, I understand you know? that. I just, I mean, just looking through it. I just want to go through all the bureaucracy. That's all. You know, I just want to get it done. Whatever I got to do, I'll do it. And I, I'll take the building inspectors on. I'll take his input on what his thought was, or if he feels as though a multifamily residence permit is the best option to approve this. Um, well, I think if you have a multifamily residence and you have somebody that's in the apartment, they're going to be living there more than you know a week at a time. So if they're not living there more than a week at a time, it'd be more like a bed and breakfast or more Airbnb or Vibro, whatever you want to call it. Right. So the bed like and breakfast thing residence. is is more like if you were just there in your house, right? Yeah. But you're already subdivided into two, and then you're going to go to three. No, no. I'm taking yeah, yeah. one of my yeah. units from the first floor, right. and I'm going to rent it out. I understand that. Yeah, okay. And then you're going to Airbnb the third spot. No, what do you mean? No. Adam. Could I ask a question? Uh, Gabby had her hand up. Let me go to her first. Well, is it already is it already a two family, and you're adding a bed and breakfast, or it, it's currently a one family, and you need to make it into a three? It's already, it, it is already a two family with the approval of the town, and I have a separate one unit, like it's one bedroom, and I just want to rent that out. Is that, or I'm just going to in, include it with the first floor apartment? I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me. I just thought this would be better. For the town, you know what I mean. You can make some extra money, getting the tax income coming in. So you have like wired smoke detectors through all three units, and you have fire separation and all those things. I do. Yeah, everything's been inspected. Everything's approved. Yeah. Thank you. I could speak to it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, all right. Go go ahead, please, Bob. Yeah. So there's a first floor unit that has that extra area that he wants to rent out. And then the second floor of the building is Correct. currently being renovated as the two family. But what he was trying to do was rent once the second floor is done and it's officially the two family was to rent out the area he has on the first floor. Exactly. I couldn't think of a good way to handle it. So I suggested as a bed and breakfast versus a multifamily because he didn't want to call it a three family. Exactly. So that's I guess how we, my only question to you is why would you not want to call it a three family? Um, because it's not a three family. It's not a three family. It, it it's it's a two family with one extra additional uh, apartment that's there. You know, I'm not going to rent it out as another three family unit. But is it is there a toilet in back? Like, would they or is it just a bedroom with a separate exterior door? I'm just un, I'm just confused on like the layout. I mean, it's a it's a good sized building. And I'm just, you know, also thinking about down the road, if you sell the property in a couple of years, someone else might have the same vision that you have on it and then have a permanent tenant there. And then either the town's in a situation or the owner's in a situation where if it's a multifamily residence, then it's cleaner, in my opinion. Um, so what's your question? I I I didn't mean to hear a question from there. You, uh, you say about the things. What is yeah, your question? Yeah, go ahead. Need, I, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, um, I guess I'm I'm learning that uh, Bob, um, the building director, um, guided you in a sense to this he application. Yeah, we've been working. You know, he's okay. been helping me out. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 so we're 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 all on the same page, trying to sort of sort out like 
how it flows through the code and 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 I'm not clear um what what is this a special permit you know where's the regular permit in the code where's the regular permit that he needs a special permit to exceed um and I'm you know but I also was was hoping sir that you could describe in detail the floor plan and that first floor because when you say apartment is that a self-sufficient living unit? Somebody has their own toilet, kitchen, they do. heat. Yes. So it's it's yes. it's yes. it's it's an interesting first floor where there's two separate units, but you don't really consider them two rentable separate units. Exactly. One is for making money, mm -hmm. and one is for for supplying residents, you know, for the town of Deerfield. And the other one is with, with people uh -huh. coming in who need a uh -huh. place to stay. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah. So I guess I'm looking at the page in the code that talks about accessory apartments, um, but I don't think that's appropriate. Do we do we have a permitting system? I thought we did, or was it just discussed maybe at the planning board for a temporary rental situation? You know, because that's what you're talking about, right? A temporary rental situation. And do we have that kind of permit or anything like it? No, we no, we don't. We have boarding house and we have bed and breakfast and in what is more of a traditional sense is which is what adam's saying we don't have anything on a on a short term well what is how is a bed and breakfast not what he's talking about how how is that different i think it involves serving breakfast yes <laughs> remember it's a you business. could you could have a fruit plate on the you know tape. I don't know. So wait, right. Right. You could just leave a basket full of stuff. Right, and then we allowed a change of use with the Airbnb situation next to Fisher's Garage, and we conditioned that. Remember, we did that one, but that was so they but they could still rent that out down the road. But that wasn't specific. Like what they're doing to the building, we don't have anything specific for short term rental governance. Um, so. I see. So it's not a bed and breakfast, ostensibly, because he's not serving breakfast. And the bed and breakfast thing is more for like a single family house, like the one on Grave Street that we went through. She came in for a bed and breakfast, but mm -hmm. it's a, and it, she it's integral. It's integral, thing. but you can still whatever platform you use doesn't make a difference to no, us. I, I get you know, uh, no, I'm just saying um, bed and breakfast is a category. Right. Short term rental could be a category if the town were to entertain that but right now if you have a property and you want to rent it the vehicle you use to rent it is not within our purview that's my understanding there's no governments on that and there's yeah. is, is he even uh violating a code if it doesn't exist well the qu the question is he he would be if he has three separate living spaces and he doesn't have a special permit for a multifamily dwelling yeah because a multifamily also requires a special permit Right. So he anybody in Central Village residential is cool for two family by right. Then you go to three units, you need to have a special permit. And then if you have a multifamily, it's not necessarily allowed in other parts of town. It's only mm -hmm. so if he got the three family permit, he could do what he likes with that third apartment to a certain degree, having people stay short term rent it long term but he doesn't have the three units right it, well we're a little confused we have yeah. four meters on the building uh-huh we got three separate spaces but we haven't had to answer your question we can let the applicant speak to it how it's like divided up in there right, like bathroom kitchen no bathroom kitchen yes. no exterior door so that little apartment that's there, it's about. Can you just speak in the mic so the people. Uh, okay. You bring it closer. So, like, yeah. Bring it closer. Yeah, you, there's support there. Yep. Like this is a yeah, better. Yes, yes, right yes. there. All right. <laughs> so anyway, so you have one small area, right? It has mm -hmm. one room, mm -hmm. has a bathroom and a small kitchenette. It's called mm -hmm. a kitchenette. You know, no stove, no nothing else, but just you know. And that's it on that side. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is a you know three bedroom apartment. Okay. That's the first floor. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's, the, that's first the first floor. Yeah, and then the second floor is an entirely separate unit. Second floor, yeah, we got the permits out now. Building inspector's been over there today. We just got it insulated. We're starting to get that done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Are there two exit doors from this third bed and breakfast apartment? 
Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't are there two egresses? Yeah. Yes, there is. If you could just speak in the mic, sir, I'm sorry, but she yes, can't. there is. Thank you. Thank so, you. so, and and then also, then the first floor apartment does it theoretically does it need two egresses that are it not? It has two egresses. Parts? Yeah. Okay. And there's plenty of parking. It sounds to me like the bottom floor fits the definition of a uh, bed and breakfast. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, but, I mean, I'll. I'm trying, I, I would do everything by the books. So whatever I got to do, I'll do it. You know, I mean, I have no problem with this. Yeah. Can somebody know the code? Where can I find that bed and breakfast? Yeah, if you keep flipping through there, I was looking. It's sort of, it's not next to accessory apartments. No, I think it's in the back in the definitions. There's the definitions. All the definitions are all the way in the back. So mm -hmm. I don't have my zoning with me or I'd read it to you. Okay, I got it. Bed and breakfast shall mean a private owner occupied residence. Yeah, and I live there. In which lodging and breakfast are offered to transients short term for a fee. Such a facility shall not contain more than six rooms for rent. You live in the upstairs? I live in the downstairs, right next to this. Yeah. It sounds like he meets the criteria, but I don't know if that's, is there anything further in, in the code? Well, I mean, you know, we can, we can take public comment and we can discuss it in delivery. I feel as though that it's a separate unit that he, that Miss uh, Richard Harrington said, is there separate egresses and accesses? That was her question. He said, yes. So it's a separate walled off unit. So it's not within the residence. Oh, you can't go back and forth through them? Yeah, you can. With a closed, and lo closed door, they're separate. Yeah, the inside is all open up. You can come back and forth. There's doors right there. It's just the outside. You can go out the outside. There's a door here in the front. There's a door here in the front, right? There's a door here to go into this unit. And there's a door to go into this unit. They're all combined. And there's one door in the very front that I can open up, and you can open up all the doors. It's mm -hmm. all combined and together. So, so to make it a separate apartment, really, you'd have to make that kitchenette into a kitchen. You'd have to like really separate somehow a wall between those two units. Right now, you can just walk right in and out of the unit. You can walk right in and out of each unit. Yes, you can. Through a door. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I have seen it. It is sort of like just a room in the downstairs area with multiple doors with a little kitchenette it's not it's it's super gray area i mean that, that's why i kind of didn't know what, how to direct them really but i wouldn't call it a necessarily a third unit it, it's i, I don't want to get too into the definition but yeah and i'm not would, yeah oh, sorry so doesn't a second egress need to be to the outdoors not in through another apartment the you can egress does go to the it outside. does one goes yeah. to the inside hallway and one goes to the outside and then there's a third door that just connects the two together yeah, exactly yeah. three doors but he's so he's not looking to claim it as a third unit so the egresses are less of an issue right i mean it's really one unit and that, it has has a window for emerge for um you know egressable window also okay yeah, and if, my, we, if my, we call it a, 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 a whatever bed and breakfast, it doesn't have to have fire separation from this apart from from the owner's apartment. By code, I'm not sure. I mean, we're building code, or are we on zone? This is zoning, so building code. It's within the unit, and he's not calling it a unit. So that's where I would say no, because it's part of the first floor. It's all it's all like one thing, other than it's a yeah. room with a kitchenette in it. it and, and, it's a and, gray area. I'm not trying yeah. to dance I, I, around I, that at all. Does it have separate <laughs> utilities? In the apartment, you're asking. In this in this room that has a kitchenette in it, does it have its own separate um, meter? No, no, not for the water. For the electricity, yes, we'll put a new meter in that. Yeah, so I can. You yeah. know, see what's going on with that yeah. unit as I rent it. Yes, of course. 
So, but yeah, okay, but that's that's an an, an account. Well, I guess it's not neither here nor there in some respects. But um, uh, Bob, respectfully, I, I I guess I disagree that it's a gray area. It seems to me, but I also will say that it's not our purview. Like I don't see what we have to give a special permit for. Well, we, if he well, wants to put someone in there, he needs a special permit. Yeah, definitely Either needs a special a permit. Yeah, or as a multifamily. Well, doesn't he but, have it? Doesn't he have two units by right? You said. Yeah, but he's got the upstairs that we're not even talking about. He's well, he's, that's what I mean. So doesn't he just need a permit for the upstairs? No, he doesn't want a permit for the upstairs. It's somebody's asking for. It. No, yeah, I he, know. He wants to call. The, so his choice was he either needed to incorporate this area in the first floor, which is what we what I told him, and it is just straight up a two family, or he could try another route. And this is was the route because we have no definition of renting out a room as an right. airbnb yeah he is completely right and that's what i said i said should i just incorporate this one little room into the first floor apartment which is fine i will do that but can i just rent it as an airbnb and that's what we're getting at right now i mean if not i'll just incorporate it into the first floor apartment I, it doesn't matter to me i'm trying to help out the town may, may i ask a question you know, that's that's all huh? uh yes laura go ahead um so you live on the first floor. I did, yeah. So if he had a bedroom in his home and he wished to rent it out at his own will, whenever, could he do that? That would like, be... Wouldn't it be... Well, depending it, on... That would be the bed and breakfast room. So it's... This part of the house is technically attached to your part of the it house. Is, yeah, it's... So it feels to me like he'd be renting out one of his rooms um, to people coming into town. Right. So the the it's but it's more than that, right? It's a separate bathroom, separate kitchenette, and it's a separate electric meter. Why is that? Our what? Concern? Yeah, I don't. Oh, because that's why is it our concern because we have to decide if we want to grant him the ability to do this it's our concern there's a big difference between me having a single family house and airbnb or having a bed and breakfast and having a second bedroom that's attached to my living space that is not separated it doesn't have its own bathroom it doesn't have its own kitchen and that that's different than having someone make a permanent change to a building that's defining as three separate living areas and we're a little bit in a gray area and the question is do we want to permit this at all do we want to permit this as a bed and breakfast or do we want to permit this as a multi-family dwelling because you can have a multi-family dwelling or or, or if you don't or, permit then he's gonna have to incorporate it and right. be just the two family right so that's or he can have a two family by right so so those are those are the things that i'm looking at as what is what are we having because you know we people are here for a short time right buildings are here forever for the most part so when we're creating extra units in a building we're also thinking about not the person that owns the building now but how that moves forward so if you know we're looking at long-term goals of the residential district what are and what's the best way to like we don't want a property owner to come back or the next person that buys this property if there's anybody and say that this is a three family and rent it as such and then our building inspector says no it's not it's only a bed and breakfast so you can only have people here for one or two nights yeah but wouldn't that be on the listing i mean no realtors don't have to follow the law can i ask another no, question no. why why are there four meters yeah, right so that's that's the i that's what i saw when i was well, there's four meters, right? So that has it kind of set up. So he has it. Uh, for... So you have the first floor, second floor. You have the Airbnb. Well, you want to call it whatever you want to call it, bed and breakfast. I want a meter on that so I can, you know, control. Yep. Yep. What I'm saying. And then I have one for the owner. I mean, right. four meters. That's uh, four co meters. Common areas. Right. It, common it areas. has common hallways that have to be. Yeah. Uh, so okay. Have, okay. I have, have a meter for the outside lights and the common hallways. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, so, oh, so that that area is already there. He's not creating this area. He's either going to have to remove the kitchenette because I don't know how else to call it a two family, or this was a possibility. So, 
I think it feels to me that it's definitely not a three family. He would have to renovate and put a full kitchen in for it to be a three family. Yeah, there's not even a stove in there. Right. Yeah, it's no, separated. it's very kind of it would have to be you would have to do a lot more work to have it be a three family. To me, it feels like um like a master bedroom with a with a little kitchen go. in it. Oh. Um so I don't know how that would look. It feels like an uh, Airbnb. I mean, sorry, a bed and breakfast personally to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, do we have any members of the public that would like to speak to this at the public hearing before we can either close the public hearing or move on? No one here from the public wants to speak to this. Anybody online, Pat, can you see? There's no, there's no one else from the public online. Okay. Uh, members, do uh, you have anything you want to add for discussion or anything more for the applicant or conditions or do you want to continue it? Anything from anybody? Yeah, I have some questions. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm understanding now that we have the ability to grant a special permit, which is a bed and breakfast. That's one of our powers. That's what the applicant is seeking. Is, is that within our purview? Yes. Yes. And anyone who wants to run a bed and breakfast needs a special permit. Correct. Okay. And so... Um, Just for I think the 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 um, uh, the board, but I think also for the public. If you could just clarify, then what part of the process are we in here now? Where are we at? Well, we we have a public hearing open. We have the applicant who is here to answer questions. He filled out an application requesting a special permit for a bed and breakfast, and we can do whatever we would like if we like to take action on it if you want to continue it if you want to ask more questions uh i can we can go see where people stand and see what he's you know what what he's looking at if we want to do like a straw vote yes ma'am member of the public Well, we have to evaluate the statements of the applicant to determine if that's what's actually happening there. If, if, if there's a question from the public, can you repeat it? Sorry, just because I didn't hear anything. question from the audience was, I didn't hear anything. why can't we just grant the special permit? Which we can. We can take a vote and, and grant the special permit if we wish to. But that's what we're here. We can also condition it to allow for annual inspections we can condition it for um to make sure that it meets all required codes of all other departments we can condition the parking must be off street we can condition that it is only with mr nunez the applicant that he does not he can't transfer that permit if he sells the property the prop the new property owner has to come to us and ask or whoever's here for that permit to be continued Oh, you're welcome, ma'am. Okay, thank you. For one that. next to the one next to Fisher's garage, we did condition with a couple of things. One was that the owner would still be using it, right? Correct. That it was not it with, They would have to come back. A new owner would have to come back to us. I don't think we conditioned it with any kind of inspections or annual anything's. Other we than conditioned that. it with that has to meet all other regulations. And do we can we put an occupancy on this one room? We can. We, we did, did some occupancy conditions on the bed and breakfast on Grave Street. Yes. Okay. I, I would be in favor of those things. Can you remind us, Adam, if you remember what, what occupancy or what other conditions? I think the applicant asked for a maximum of four people, and she had two rooms. Okay. Um, so... Um, did, did, sir, have you considered an occupancy limit or what you are 
Well, you know. it, it's one room. I mean, just imagine you have one room. You know what I mean? Two you people have, limit? Sir, if you could just pull that microphone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Close. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just imagine you have one room, right? I mean, how many no, people we get it. Live in it? How many people are going to live in that? One or two? Is two? that what? Probably two of them all. Well, so, I mean, just trying to clarify. That's but all. There's, there's a difference between how many people can comfortably live in a place and how many people will stack up in there to give you max graduation. I'm not going to. I know what you're talking about. No, no, no. no. I'm not going to stack. No, no. Yeah. No. Okay, well, and I think we limited the other one to like because uh, it was a short term rental. So if if a, if a young family came with three small children and three little porta cribs, that that was okay for a couple of days, right? We said that that was next to Fisher's garage. Yes, I don't know, I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a very so different if you want fewer, that's here. better, but we don't want a lot more than that. I, I don't want no, I don't want that. I'm living in this house. Are you kidding me? You think I want kids around me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I hear you on on the parking idea. I mean, we didn't do it over at Fisher's Garage. The, you know, this there's a pretty big driveway off street parking. We have we have seven spots. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to that. Um, it, it it seems like a good idea. I'm not sure why we didn't do it for for Fisher's Garage one. Um, but you know, there is parking on the street. I I don't know. Is it is it um restricted parking on the street can you park overnight on those streets on north Main? not from may 1st yeah when the november, following, thinking, not yeah. not mm -hmm. from november 1st to may 1st mm -hmm. but but if he's only like, talking uh, one or two people you know i mean obviously i guess my thinking is off street parking is better it's a it's a better thing for the town it's you know so that we didn't do it for fishers maybe was an oversight but i think it's it's probably a good idea here and otherwise i think it you know it 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 seems to fit the nature of the bed and breakfast and you know i i, I, I like yeah, the it, idea it, it, as i rented it would only be for one car yeah okay you're not going to bring two cars in there no no, no. okay one at a time you know? yeah. i'm sorry is this already a multi-family it's Does a it two, two family <laughs> two two family it's already it, a two family okay right. it's a it two was, family a special, a special oh. permit for a multifamily would be required to have three rentable units there. That That's why, since he's making the upstairs a full-blown apartment, he either has to remove the kitchenette so the first floor yep. is truly one unit. That's but, how we ended up I here. mean, it's also an existing non-conforming dwelling, really. It was a bookstore prior. Correct, but he did have a permit that was granted before I got here five years ago to convert it to a like a building permit to make it a two right. family because it's allowed by right. And Correct. This, he's been working on this for years now. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason not to go for a three family? The applicant wanted to go for the bed and breakfast, and that was what the uh application was for okay and do we have a specific definition of bed and breakfast and that, yeah, it's in the back i can read it out to you if you'd like dave it's under 5700 i could read it i have it right here okay go ahead a bed and breakfast shall mean a private owner occupied residence in which lodging and breakfast are offered to transients for a fee such a facility shall not contain more than six rooms for rent. That's the end of the definition? That's yes. It. So at the beginning of that, doesn't it kind of imply, I mean, it doesn't say it's, but it says a private owner occupied, makes it almost sound like they're talking about single family dwellings that have bed and breakfasts. David, I respectfully disagree. I, I think you're reading into it. No, no, I'm, I'm asking. I'm, I'm yeah, well, no, okay. So I'm saying no. It says a private owner occupied residence. I think he that it fits. He, so, and, so, and so he we can put residence. He occupies it. He's the owner. So, so we could, can. He, I, I think I know where you're going, David. Is condition it as owner occupied and that unit anyway. I mean the the first floor. Just trying. Yeah. To help. No, I, um, I was. Yeah, I don't. I'm gonna stop trying to help. I'm no, that's okay. I'm, I'm going to stay just, neutral. <laughs> I was just trying to think of: Do we have any multi-unit buildings in town that are more than 
two or three. And then I have to kind of vi visualize people renting out rooms in a portion of a multi-unit building and calling it bed, you know, bed and breakfast. It, it just, it doesn't seem like your typical bed and breakfast. I mean, how does that differ from our, you know, boarding accessory units? So anybody, everybody's allowed to have I some. I can read that. If you want me to read that, that would be helpful, right? The boarding part? Boarding house shall well, mean not more than six rooms within a building for lease to transients without cooking facilities. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't mean boarding house. I'm saying this is accessory. There's a right that's that's short of a boarding house that, that was that's up to two people. Accessory dwelling. Yeah. This is not an accessory dwelling. I, I understand that. I'm just trying to make the analogy that um, an accessory dwelling is definitely in a single family home. Exactly. So, right. 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 And this is in a single. It's in a single person's unit is what he's trying to say, but it's a separate thing. It says residence in the in the in this definition. It doesn't say house. It doesn't say single family. Yeah. I'm tending towards saying this is fine. It sounds like this owner, since this this room is within his space, that he's going to control it well. Um, and it sounds to me like there will be other families in town that are looking to do similar things. And this sounds like it's very reasonable. It meets the all the building codes and it, it it's got off street parking and we don't give the permit with the next owner. I think that this is definitely controllable and reasonable. And the question is, embedded in what you just said was that other families and people in town are maybe going to be looking to do this. So it seems like we may need, somebody needs to tackle this in town around, um, you know, towns that are dealing with kind of quote Airbnb issues. You know, I think they kind of design separate bylaws for them. It was attempted. But also the different Airbnb. companies have different rules and regulations. VRBO and Airbnb all have different regulations for the amount of time somebody can be there, the amount of consecutive days someone can stay, and a bowl of fruit is definitely a breakfast. I've stayed in many of these. So. Yeah, I tend to agree with Gabby. I, I think it fits the the definition. And if other folks want to, uh, you know, well, well, also what I was saying before, David, is the planning board did attempt a process to create some clarity around this um, I think it might have got lost in the accessory dwellings. I, I'm not an expert on it. I shouldn't be quoted. Um, but you're right. It's it's there's a certain gap, but the the closest fit and 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 which it doesn't violate in any way yeah. is the bed and breakfast. Yeah. And I'm not really. Yeah, I guess I don't really. Uh, I, I agree with Gabby. I'm inclined to to go forward with this, but you know. And how does the town monitor it for sort of the rooms tax? Or some kind of tax on on the occupancy. It's um, if it's basically the I don't know of any of the the assessors have any type of inspection process in place, but I do know um, that the town accountant and treasurer um, do see payments from some places in town directly from those companies. Yeah. Um, that do that, but I don't believe they've had anybody that's voluntarily came came forward that I'm aware of. So, I I personally think that the that it's not a bed and breakfast that it's a multifamily. Um, but you know, if, if everybody else is, if we want to take a vote or give the app, applicant an opportunity, um, or you know, to agree to these conditions, we can close the public hearing. But if he agrees to the conditions of no on-street parking at 70 North Main Street, a max number of people in short-term rental, a max number of nights that they're there, um, you know, he agrees to any inspections um, that the building inspector and South Deerfield Fire Department seems fit. Um, you know, I think that those regulations. You know, and, and that the 
permits non-transferable, I think it puts some control on the property that, you know, the majority of board members may be, may be fine with. Okay, let's assume that what you just said is correct and the majority is. What What's the um, uh, occupancy limit? I just want to say, I think you're asking a lot of me. You're asking a lot of me. Okay, so if you don't want to agree to the, those conditions, that's fine too. You haven't you 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 keep talking, but you're not telling me what it is. I'm telling you what it is, sir. What? I will tell you that that the board members aren't determined. There's not we the whole board here is not in favor at this point of giving you a special permit okay. for a bed and breakfast. Okay. Well, you so, don't know that. So, well, the whole board is not. Oh, okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so so. You're not explaining yourself. Well, I can, sir, explain yourself. Please, please, please. Or in 15 minutes, as a chairman, I might continue this hearing to another day. What what conditions so, is the applicant um, that he just heard not uh, in favor? We're, so we're we're debating okay. if we want to grant this. Do we want to grant this with with certain conditions to protect the community? That's what we're charged to do here as a board. This is not an individual thing. Okay. okay. I don't want to get into politics with you. That's for damn sure. That's okay. Fine. All right. Keep going. <clears throat> so, uh, some of the board members may want to get grant you this bed and breakfast special permit, but they might be more comfortable doing it with some conditions. And some of those conditions that they've mentioned are no on street parking, a maximum number of people in your bed and breakfast. And what's the maximum amount of people? That's what I'm saying. Tell well, we haven't people. set it yet because we have to. You're not telling me everything that I yeah. need to know. All right. You want me to agree to something? No, 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 no. We don't want you to agree yet. We want you to oh. understand that this is the things that we're going to finalize in okay. the next five minutes. We're okay. going to come yeah. to, and then we're going to say this. Is, okay. Right. I understand. Okay. So. <clears throat> We have board members, and I'm just going to go around just to try to do this in an organized fashion. And I'm going to start here, and we're going to go across. Would you like to see, Laura, any specific conditions if you if this permit was to be approved? Um, I'd say between two and four people, max. So four would be max. Okay. Anything else? What were the other, the on-street parking? Yep. No on-street parking. Inspections as needed by building department and the fire department. And the board of health. I, I would say one time um, to get it going. I don't. You, you don't. I don't I, think you can. Do, I don't think you can. We, we can. You, you can tell me that I get my, my house inspected every year. If you want to run an Airbnb there, yeah, we can condition by, it for by that. What, by what authority do you have that's not nice to do that? Well, <laughs> then we don't have to grant the special permit. Yeah. I know. I understand where I'm at here. Right. Okay. So what authority so we have. to do things that doesn't seem like constitutional right to, my, to me. So okay, then that's fine. Right. Then you can have a two-family by right and you can withdraw your application. Well, but I also want to say that we're not saying that it's going to be inspected on any specific schedule. It sounds to me, in fact, um, unnecessary because those people already have the right to inspect. Isn't that true? Uh, not on an annual or regular basis. I, I, then okay, they have so a court process. So like, let's say there was a complaint that the strawberries at the bed and breakfast weren't, you know, up to par, or there was a complaint from the neighbor that the person's been there for six months. Right. So then they don't have to allow an inspection unless it's part of the special permit. And then they have to go to court. To, so that's why we think about the other people in town. We think about the neighbors and residents when we issue these things. And so you're so, conceiving of this um, condition as. Um, pegged to a number per year? No, I'm just saying that in in my opinion, if there's a possibility of me voting for this, that I want a condition that inspections shall take place as needed at the determination of the building inspector, the fire department and the board of health. 
if they never inspect it, that's not on me. But the, it. we're it. giving them the ability, mm -hmm. if there's a complaint, to do an inspection if they see fit as part of his special permit. If he has a by right to family, that's fine. He doesn't have to allow any inspection. That's that's I'm, that's, I'm fine with that. But if we're going to have a bed and breakfast in this building or in any building, as far as I'm concerned, then we want to condition that so that if there's a complaint if, from a resident that there's no longer that happening there or something different is happening, that our enforcement officials have the ability to do their job and have some ability to back that up. I hear you. Uh, let me ask if it was a restaurant is there a similar condition built in that the health inspector can inspect upon need? Uh, if a restaurant comes to us, we absolutely would probably put something like no, that. No, no, just saying generally, restaurants have health yeah, I, codes, no, right? No, Buildings have building. No idea. Special permits give us the, the ability to put conditions on it as mm -hmm. things come up. Yeah, but I'm just wondering if it's, if it's um, necessary. You want me to speak to that? Or sure. Sure. Yeah, the health department can inspect a restaurant basically at any time. If the restaurant has an, is an occupancy of more than 50, it's an assembly building, so we inspect them am, annually. If they have a liquor license, we inspect them annually. Multifamilies, we should inspect every five years. Um, the code doesn't specifically address short-term rentals yet. It may in the next code cycle, which would be on a five-year basis or three-year basis. It hasn't been adopted, but there's potential for it to make sure the smoke detectors work and the exits are clear and just basic building safety. Right. So right now, they what Bob just said is they don't have that ability. We so, don't have that ability. So that's why I think if someone's doing this short-term, that we should grant that authority through the special permit process in the town of Deerfield. But the applicant that, might not want to agree to that. I that's, understand. That's yeah. their okay, purpose. but for my purposes, that yeah. sounds reasonable. Okay. Um, and the other, you know, maximum of four seems totally reasonable. Off street parking seems totally reasonable. What's the? Is there another one? Any others that you might want? Okay. All right, uh, Miss uh, Richard Harrington. I think my only concern at this moment in time is that we're consistent and we've already given one in town. I would like to be reminded of what rules and regulations we put on that one before I decide. I, I am in favor of this, but I'd like there to be some consistency. Uh, as far as I can recall for the two that we did that were recent, uh, one on Grave Street and one, the one on Grave Street was much more definition of a bed and breakfast as a single family residence to start with. Um, the one that was a change of use from the picture frame gallery next to um, Fisher's garage, we conditioned that on number of people, both were. Um, we conditioned that on non-transferable, um, that it had to stay with that owner. It couldn't be transferred to another property. And I can't, and I believe uh, inspections um, on those as well are okay. all other regulations. Then I'm in favor of it, as we've said so far, off street parking, limited time for people, owner occupied, that sort of thing. Okay. The only thing I didn't have a specific on, you said limited time. So on that rental, did we want to say cause a bed and breakfast is short term, we'd say four nights or seven? No, that's up to whatever program he goes with. If the town okay. wants to collect money from Airbnb or wherever, then they okay. have rules and regulations and we should let those set so that the town makes its cut. No? Okay. I'm, I'm not sure I understand. How, how a uh, question would, do you, does anybody want a condition on a number of nights of the bed and breakfast? How many nights could you, could you do a 21 day reserve, 14 day reserve? Right. right. Day? No, my question was more about Gabby. Yeah. What, what are you, what well, are like you Airbnb doing? has specific rules that you can't be more. No, than I know, but you mentioned some cut to the town. <laughs> well, yeah. If you, if you work through Boom Airbnb, that. they, they take a, they take a percentage and they give the town the taxes. No. That's what's yeah, happening in most places. The state gets some. I'm not, yeah. a, but I, I guess you're right. So, so, uh, so, but you're saying, and they have their own rules and regulations. Each different company about how long you can rent for. Yeah, I mean, you can pick up to sixty days on VRBO and up to thirty days on Airbnb. Right. So I think we should let you know let that hold true for whatever company Mr. Nunez goes with. 
you know, can I say something? Sometimes, you know, I might have somebody who wants to rent it for 30 days. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. like D.A. Sullivan's going to work at the library. Mm-hmm. Maybe they want to have an office space here. Mm-hmm. They want to rent it for 30 days. So I, I can't see how you want to limit me to like four or five days. That's ridiculous. Well, what the well, we're not we haven't done that. The member was saying the member was the member was saying that she wanted to leave it up to the platform. And now you as the applicant said that you might rent it as office space to D.A. Sullivan for 30 I, days. I don't know. So that's way different. I'm just saying, someone wants to rent it for 30 days. Someone who's working. Sir, can you just use the microphone so the people can hear you? I'm sorry. I it's I don't like sitting like this myself, but okay, I've been reprimanded for not. So, gotcha. All I'm saying is that if someone wants to rent it for 30 days, maybe someone who's working at D.A. Sullivan's, he's doing the construction over there, the carpentry work, and he wants a place for 30 days, then I'm going to give him a place for 30 days. You know, and you can't tell me that I can only rent it for four days. I mean, that's that doesn't seem right, you know? Well, we, we can, but we understand that you think that's um, onerous and, and, and you know, not going to work for you to have that short of a limit. Right. And I so, mean, I think that would... But I'm confused by Gabby saying we're going to set a condition, but we're going to let the platform set the condition. It doesn't sound like a condition to me, and I'm not arguing about it. I'm just curious as to how you're thinking about that. Well, it's never more than 60 days. It's not like somebody's going to live in that dwelling as a full-time apartment. So why don't we just say 60 days? I mean, well, the RBO is usually 60 days and Airbnb is usually like 21 or 30. Does 60 sound good to you? I, I don't know that I'd have a problem if if it's somebody like D.A. Sullivan and they're building our library. No, I don't think I'd have a problem. Yeah, I would agree that. to that. I would agree to 60 days. That's fine. I mean, yeah, I hear you, Gabby. I'm not sure we can, you know... Um, pick and choose who it is if they're D.A. Sullivan, you know, people that we, you know, love to build our No, but if we if we let this gentleman choose, you know, not go with one of these companies, the the town doesn't get the tax money, the state doesn't necessarily get their tax money, and we don't have any other... uh, I think that's how it works well most other places. That's all. I understand. I, I I think sixty days sounds reasonable to me. If that's what you're saying, is is yeah. the extent of that's one. That's usually of the maximum. I'd agree with that. I would agree with that. Two, two quick questions for me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Dave. What are the dimensions of this room that we're putting four, possibly adults into? It's about two hundred and seventy-six square feet. Yeah, I might go with a reduction in the maximum to, to two anyway. He was saying two, like one, two. That's all he's going to do in there anyway. Like, I hear you, David. <laughs> why do we Why do we want to allow four human beings to, to live in that space for 60 days? That doesn't seem... Because if it's an Airbnb it's... and it's two adults and two small yeah. babies, then there shouldn't be a problem. If he, this man chooses not to rent to children, that's a different story. But that should not be a problem. Well, but we're also working with the gentleman who's who's asking for it. He's telling us... I don't know. I mean, do you want to speak to that? Does you can say no more than two adults. Sound like no something. No more than two adults. No, never, never. No, 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 no. That ain't happening. No, I'll sign some of that too. No. So you're comfortable if we say a limit of two? Two adults. No, no I think I, I was just wanted the question to answer, but I, I kind of agree with, with it, two adults is good. But, you know, if someone's doing an Airbnb and coming in with two kids, um, it shouldn't be a problem either. I think it's the long-term idea of four unrelated adults in in a place. Okay. That sounds quite small. It could be problematic. So two adults is what we're kind of coming to agree on. Um, well, I would say maximum two adults, but four people. If again, as that Gabby says, people have two little toddlers coming in, and I hear you. They're traveling through. I mean, I, again, I, we have no information about the layout, you know, queen size bed, pull out sofa. Um, what? I'm comfortable with what you're talking about. Two adults, maximum four people. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at 730, just so everybody's aware, we're going to either continue this hearing or we're going to to another day or we're going to we're going to start the next one at 7 30 or we can if there's uh we can close the public hearing and take a vote or we can continue it to another day what would the membership like to do i'm going to start with laura i'd like to vote okay 
I'd like to vote. Okay, I'm seeing yes on that. Okay, so we're gonna close the public hearing. No one else from the public is on. Pat. There's a gentleman named Jeff Squire. I don't know if he's with the applicants. He's with, he's, he's with, he's with the, Berkshire uh, Design. Next. Next. That's next. what I thought. Okay. okay. So, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, we're in a public hearing. Okay. Before we close the public hearing, I just want to make sure that you uh, and the board, the membership, is on the same page with the conditions that you applied for a bed and breakfast. Correct. Permit for a bed and breakfast. Correct. Okay. And that in order to operate that bed and breakfast, that it has to be owner occupied. That Correct. you occupy the first floor with that bed and breakfast, okay? And that you're going to rent it on a short-term basis for no more than 60 days. Yes. Okay? And the maximum occupancy in that is a mix of adults and children not to exceed four people. Yes. Okay? You're going to allow for inspections as required by the building inspector, the Board of Health, and the South Deerfield Fire Department as they determine to be needed. Mm. Uh, you had to explain to me what needs to be needed. I mean, if the, is it once if a the year? building they get to come in once a year, or I, I'm not. Year? I have no. They if they want to do an inspection based but on don't, your don't special. You think I should know this before I agree to it. Yeah, I'm explaining to you that okay. we're going to make a condition that if the building inspector, the board of health, or the fire department want to do an inspection, that you have to allow that inspection to take place. If it makes you, if it makes them more comfortable, it wouldn't be without notice. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be without random. notice. It wouldn't be random. Yeah. Oh, okay. W with notice. Okay, fine. That's fine. Right? No on-street parking. And that you conform to all other town, municipal ordinances, and state regulations. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I need someone to make a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. make a motion to second. Okay, so just for the record, because of the online thing, David Potter made the motion to close the public hearing. It's Debbie been, Richard Harrington like Debbie second. Harrington, and we're going to go around and vote. Four. I'm in favor. Aye. I vote yes. I Adam yes. Debbie yes. Dave Sharp yes. Okay, now that the public hearing is closed, we have 90 days to make a decision. Do you want to move forward with voting on a decision or do you, the board members feel so they have, would like to set another date or do they want to make a decision tonight? Laura? Um, I'm ready to make a decision. Okay. Same. I'm ready. Uh, yes. And Dave, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other discussion between board members? I would just like it added into that condition with notice, as we stated, All that, right. that the so, inspections would be with notice. Yep. All right. So I will uh, I will get right back on this, and I will read what we're voting on, okay? <clears throat> okay. The Zoning Board of Appeals is going to be voting on a special permit to David Nunez of 70 North Main Street, okay, in South Deerfield, Mass. He is asking for a special permit to operate a bed and breakfast, map 169, lot parcel 36, Central Village Residential District. And that permit for the bed and breakfast will be non-transferable, issued just to, the, to Mr. Nunez, with the following conditions that the applicant agreed to in the public hearing, no on-street parking, a maximum occupancy of up to four people, a maximum rental term of no more than 60 days, inspections with notice as needed by the building department, the South Deerfield Fire Department, and the Board of Health. The applicant also agrees to follow all other state and municipal regulations. I'll entertain a second on that if anybody sees fit. I second. second the motion. Okay, second by David Potter. Any other discussion on the motion and the matter at hand?
Okay, Laura. Laura Pontani, aye. David Potter, yes. Adam Sokolowski, no. Gabby Richard Harrington, yes. Dave Sharp, yes. Okay. All right, sir. So you have a, uh, a vote uh, in your favor to operate your uh, bed and breakfast there. Um, if you want to follow up with Amy, uh, she'll take care of the next part of the process and getting that over to you. Okay, sir? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Okay. Uh, next up, Hampshire Lumber. Unless anybody need a recess for five minutes, I'm good. All right. Special permit hearing. 16 Elm Street. Notice hereby given that the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. On an application filed by Hampshaw Lumber, Deerfield LLC for a special permit for property located at 16 Elm Street identified in the assessor's record map as 168 lot 20 and lot 121 to allow a retail sales or rental building in a building greater than 4,000 square foot, up to 30,000 square feet for enclosed floor area in the CI district as provided by zoning laws 179, 2230, application and documents available for review in foyer of municipal offices online at www.deerfieldma.us in calendar events. So we have the applicant or the representative in front of us. Correct. All right, sir, Hi. go ahead. Uh, my name is Jeff Squire. I'm with the Berkshire Design Group here uh, on behalf of Hamshaw Lumber. Um, Chip Farnham, uh, also with Hamshaw, is here also with us to answer any building or business specific questions. Um, as noted in the application, um, this is a special permit site plan review application to the town um, under section 2230 for retail sales in a building over 4,000 square feet. Um, as you noted, this is um, 16 Elm Street. Um, yeah, that's going to cooperate with me. Um, 16 Elm Street, which is at the corner of Elm and Railroad, uh, where their existing building is. Um, and the adjacent site, which is 14 Elm Street, currently undeveloped, um, will be adjacent to the uh, will, will, be, will be the future municipal Leary Lot project and at Dry Vile. Um, in total, it's just under 1.3 acres, uh, 60,000 square feet of property. Um, and this building is currently a pre-existing non-conforming condition, at least with regards to setbacks. Um, it's, it's tied up against the property line along Railroad Street and certainly doesn't meet the front setback along Elm. Um, I don't know what the distance is, but it doesn't meet the 20 feet um, currently. So, um, the project, um, as noted, proposes uh, a new uh, 12,000 square foot building adjacent to the existing building on that vacant site, um, that empty site. We are proposing a new sidewalk connection. Um, there is stormwater management that was reviewed and approved by the planning board um, under the stormwater permit, along with the site plan review component of the special permit application um, at, um, at their last meeting. Um, we did provide some up small plan updates um, to you in response to some of their comments, primarily dealing with just some increased um, screening and vegetation along that eastern elevation, um, which we visible from you know both neighbors, but also um, you the municipal parking lot. Um, there is a sidewalk connection to the to the main walk that's proposed to sort of circumnavigate the site. Um, and this building does conform to, um, to the required setbacks and, um, and overall the site is under the, um, allowable lot coverage for the district, um, the commercial district. Um, the only other, uh, clarification is, uh, with respect to parking, again, the existing site, um, does not comply with, with current parking, um, it's, um, you know, obviously the, the parking, majority of the parking is along Railroad Street. There's some parallel parking here and then out along Elm Street. 
Um, as part of the project, there is a gravel uh, space in the back that will be made available for customer parking. It holds roughly 15 to 16 spaces, so there will be some, you know, some provision for parking on site. Understanding it's it is um, it is fairly constrained, um, so that is an improvement over uh, current conditions. Um, I don't think I have anything else to. Well, I have a few questions. Um, I. I guess my biggest con concern is, um, you know, this is this is a gateway into the center of South Deerfield District, mm -hmm. right? And we're in a process of having a major construction take place with your building mm -hmm. um, that's going to be around for a while. So um, with that... I think back to the Cumberland Farms project and the zoning board input there that that had them um, make some changes to make that a little bit more attractive than your everyday Cumberland Farms, uh, you know, with the pitched roof and no green um in the extra windows and the uh, stone and um you know, in those things, as people come into town, I just don't know if there's going to be any improvement to your existing structure, if you can explain that. And then um, on your current structure, um, if there's, I mean, and it was a big deal with uh, Dollar General that, you know, the first proposal didn't have a pitched roof or didn't have certain things that were part of community characteristics and members of the board conditioned that, wanted that project conditioned to to have that type of thing so it looked uh, more historic, more aesthetically pleasing, um, et cetera. Uh, and that plan was was changed to add, you know, a uh, pitched roof and add more windows, even though they were fake windows to help, you know, with the, with the curb appeal. So I just didn't know if there was uh, any type of work or any type of uh, thought or consideration given to some of those things uh, I know you guys are, have done a really good job expanding your business and have acquired other places that were pre-existing. So you don't really have like a, you know, all your places look a little bit different. You know what I mean? There's not like a Hamshaw Lumber specific, you know, this is how all of our buildings look. So you could speak to that. I'd appreciate it. Sure. And I may be able to offer more information. Um, you know, I know with respect to their existing building, um, there's certainly discussion about, you know, repainting it and, and freshening up, you know, the, the exterior, you know, color and just, um, you know, brightening that up. So, um, I know there was discussion about that with respect to, um, the new building, um, certainly aware that, you know, it, it faces Elm street and it has a significant, you know, presence along that streetscape and, and wants to tie in with that character. So, um, you know, I think at least in so far as the way it reads, you know, from the street, um, that it's the scale of proportions are consistent with some of the ar their architecture, you know, up and down um, that face of, of Elm Street. Um, it's certainly a long sort of narrow building, um, you know, partially is due to the to the um, desire to to put um, solar panels on the roof. And so having that, you know, fairly flat roof is is pr critical, especially given the, you know, the orientation of the building that a high pitched roof. Oh, on that scale of a building isn't really, um, you know, an appropriate, it would be a really tall, you know, it would be an A-frame or something. Um, but the the parapet in the front, wall in the front, gives it, you know, the 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 character and the um, sort of the curb appeal, that street presence that um, I think you speak to. And the, the back of the building really is, um, you know, absolutely dressing up this with with some additional vegetation. Um, the other elevation is directly abutting their existing building, so that isn't um, that isn't very visible. And then the back of the building, um, you know, again, it's it's a sixty foot wide building, I believe, roughly. Um, so it's it's you know it, it's scaled to at least have a have an entrance way and windows and penetrations to um, you know to to give an indication of where you know customers should go. Uh, but most of the most of the attention has been you know brought to the front. With Hardy Platboard, um, um, you know Anderson windows, I can certainly speak to some more of the characteristics. But I think you know color and character, materials, 
um, are all intended to tie in with um, the existing streetscape, certainly. Would there be, you know, any idea on the other side there, their second picture down, uh, and then on the side facing the proposed lot development to add some uh, of those light fixtures like you have over your main entrance and even some, you know, uh, some windows or at least maybe some light fixtures. We, I see you added that vegetation in yeah. from the original. That was the planning board's requests, but right. um yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a small area to work with, that's for sure. Yeah. And I think there's certainly some intent of providing some you know means of security lighting, whether it be associated with the Leary Lot project. Um, you know, we are right up against the property line, so you know, if possible, we'll have some fixtures installed as part of that project that light that sidewalk. Um, but if there isn't enough space, there's certainly some you know room to mount um, you know a couple of those downward facing um you know gooseneck lights um, yeah no i, I i'm lighting. a big fan of the style of lights on the front of the building i like i yep. like that i just didn't know if we could maybe add some of those around the existing building and you know spruce that that whole corner up absolutely yeah so if you could just come up to the microphone either share that would be great i'm chip farnham facilities manager um uh, yes we if you, you really got to get closer yep. i'm sorry <laughs> We are addressing those lights, down lighting, night sky lighting, they call them. So it'll be all facing down, just like the front. And we'll be more than happy to put some windows on the side. If you would like more appearance on of architectural, um, the Hardy is a very good product. It's a New England product. Uh, it's going to be clapboard on the front. It's going to be uh, on the side. It'll be board and batten look. Uh, very farm looking, traditional looking products. So, um, and the, we haven't really set a, a theme of our colors, but if we look at the Greenfield store, I just got through modeling that. And that's what we're really going with. That black window with, um, yeah, right there, with the that tan color with white trim um, and we added the the parapets down here when those are gonna be all accented with uh, AZAC trims, um, probably a step shadow trim. So it looks really architecturally pleasing, just like the one next door to the house that has a parapet. Yeah. So, um, we're just trying to make it fit for the town. Yeah, I, I just, um, no, I appreciate it. And I, I like those things and the architectural shingle look and I just, you know, I think when you have a company that's committed to Deerfield and committed to the look and enhances the property, then it, you know, kind of puts some pressure on their neighbors to make some enhancements as well. So, it, you know, it's kind of a, a trickle down effect where, um, you know, that improves it. And especially as we try to improve the parking situation downtown to help uh, all of our businesses, you know, hopefully increase their revenue and um increase the experience um i just think that you know any downward facing lighting is is helpful um a lot of people end up parking after you folks close over on railroad street and then walking in the evening to uh, the different restaurants um you know so th those are things that i think if we can enhance it through this project uh it's beneficial i agree May I ask a question just for clarification sure. on aesthetics? Yes. Um, is it going to look more like the Greenfield one or is it going to look more like the orange one? It's going to look more like the Greenfield. Okay. Because the orange one looks a little industrial. That's, uh, yeah, that that was done 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Okay. I couldn't, I just couldn't quite tell with the flatness yeah. of the paper. So I just wanted to ask. The, uh, the Keen store is the bigger one of all. That is was our attention 15 years ago. And then when we took over the leader facilities, um, we're trying to make it all look like the Greenfield store. Great, thank you so much. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Is is the clapboard style gonna be the same as what we see here in the Greenfield store? Yeah, um, it's gonna be the clapboard in the front and the board and batten on the sides. Mm -hmm. 
and it'll probably be it will be clapboards on the rear. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that is is vertical, right? Vertical yeah. with a, a yeah, one by three strip. strip. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. I have a question. Would a some sort of a peaked facade on the flat roof building affect your solar gain? No, because it's going to be, I believe it's going to be low enough, so it's not going to get involved the sun rays. And can you speak to the parking in the back, the gravel? How is that accessed? Uh, from railroad side through the security gate. I see. Okay, so that's yeah. how people come through the facility through now. And, uh, yeah, and they'll go out to the lumberyard, yeah. pick up the supply, or drive through the warehouse, which ex exists now. And could you uh, describe what is the purpose of the new building? To bring more merchandise to the town, to so you don't have to drive thirty miles, wherever. And the uh, existing building will be a different use. The existing building will be uh, eventually remodeled to show kitchen displays, window displays. Um, basically, the floor plan is a, a hardware store um, showing millwork in the new part, have small office, mostly all retail mm -hmm. supply. Mm -hmm. We want to bring hardware and some pet feed mm -hmm. to the to the mix. Um, Okay, so it's it's just an expansion. It's going to be a big hardware store, it's and hardware and then store. the yep. existing will have a different feel. Maybe down the road, you'll right. You'll yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to abandon that. It's going to be a um, very good remodel down the road. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess um, I'm in agreement with uh, what I hear from Adam as far as um, you know leaning into some enhancements um, of the existing building. Um, you know, I feel as Adam does that this is a gateway and, you know, we're, we're here giving a special permit for special purposes and, yep. you know, it's a, it's a, it's a thriving business and we want good business, but we would love to, um, lean into some of that, um, enhancement of, you know, not just the lighting around the newish building, but, but, you know, uh, lighting and, uh, perhaps dressing up. I don't know if you thought of signage, you know, and, and uh, that type of thing. I want to address that, um. Or an enhancement. As you drive in for the from Route Five over the railroad tracks, it it doesn't look very pleasing. But we want to make that better. Um, we want to make that island look better. So I'm volunteering to say we'll put a planter out with our name on it and dress that up. I mean, this is probably for another discussion. But we're here to help the town improve the entrance. Awesome. Um, and where the employees park now, again, I'll raise my hand. We want to improve that to make it look more presentable. I'm open for suggestions. Uh, I want to get rid of that weeds that grow there all the time to make, again, the presence welcoming. And yes, we will repair, and uh, one of the plans are down to make that shed look more presentable on railroad side so it doesn't look like it is so all these are thank you phases yeah just going through my my mind here um it reminded me when you picture there uh are we going to be able to get those dumpsters uh moved into a container after this project's done off the side of the street your your uh your dumpsters yep we that can, are on uh, railroad street now we can find a place for them yes And, and the total parking then you um are there still spaces right in front of the store so we did we did provide um we did provide legitimate accessible spaces yep. in the front just because of its proximity to the entryway so that that you know there is a drive lane that goes into the warehouse you know portion of the existing building but we're taking advantage of some of that added space that's there now um to create yeah legitimate accessible parking so that will be two spaces that are on, on, in your control. You, you and then in the back, there's fifteen. Correct. And and uh, 
in your experience, is that adequate? Is that, I mean, you know, do your other stores have that limited parking? Our camera store has limited parking, um, it's about 15 people. Um, and we, you know, we don't have that many people at once. So, have, yeah, yeah. Uh, once we have a special event going, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which once a year anniversary sale. Uh, um, you don't see it being filled up. Properly. Yeah, and people can be inside, right, as they're coming through. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and so do we have any information at all about signage? There wasn't anything submitted. I know the intention is to update the existing signage to be within you know zoning conformance. I don't you know the size, but I don't um I know there were some placeholders on um the elevations and, and architectural drawings. Sure. Um but I don't it hasn't been you know laid out yet specifically. There's you know there's some some resemblance of what mm -hmm. it would entail, but um mm -hmm. yeah. I think because we have limitations, right? So we, so that Can could I be another special permit. On that, yeah. to clarify that. Not me personally. Oh, what was the question? So I was just going through your list here that you submitted with your packet, and I was just checking off what. Well, I just know that we've approved special permits for big signs. Um, so right. you got you're limited in you know you're bringing a new sign. Uh, be just beware. There, you know that could be another special permit or i don't know if it could be tied in or it's a separate thing it, it's a it's a separate thing but there is some possibility that they'll be changing in that bylaw okay all right but it doesn't it it's and of course is there would there be a freestanding or it's against the building, against the building. Mm -hmm. okay. um and that's something that we could depending on what they what the board wants to do and what their long-term plans are they may want to incorporate that in a permitting process when they after they complete this phase and then go to renovate the other phase the existing building because that's what i'm hearing correctly that you're gonna build a new building over the next 18 to 24 months and then you're gonna at some time you may make a renovation to your existing structure correct Any members of the public uh, like to speak? Any butters? Yes, ma'am, just go to the microphone, please. Uh, no, right, right behind you, there's one standing up there. Yeah. Yep. Just get right, right close to it. You can take it off the stand if you want, or. If, if you feel more comfortable and you want to sit and use that microphone, you can come right up to the table here. Okay, is it on? Yeah, I think so. I can hear you. Can you, Dave, hang on, let me, Dave, can you hear on, Gabby, yep, they can hear you on the computer. Excellent. My name is Bill Sandy. We have water of 10 elm and 12 elm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm here just to see what's happening because it's right next to our property. And I know that I have dealt with Hamshaw with the tree line. And I don't know, is it for Hamshaw? Louder, please. No, this is this is Chip. Okay. He's their facilities person. They really nice. And they did take care of the brush and everything um, that was encroaching on my side. So I appreciate that very much. And I was here to just see, you know, the side that will fix my area, what it will look like. And that there is a road from the parking lot, et cetera, to the park area in the back, going between our two properties. <laughs> and they have trees. And I don't know if there's going to be 
much uh, sound or noise coming from that area. I don't think it's a working mill or anything like that. That would encroach, you know, the sound or et cetera. So I think it looks pretty good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Pat, is there anybody online that would like to speak for public comment? There is not. Okay, thank you. Well, board members, uh, I mean, any anybody else? I mean, this is a major project. If it's something that people want to think about uh, or take some time, we can continue the public hearing. We can talk about conditions if the applicant wants to or board members have any ideas um, or requests of the applicant. I have a question. Is, that, is all this new parking lot work from the town going to be going on at the same time? I don't know. I I don't know what the applicant's time frame is. We can ask them when they're going to do it. I don't know as if there's a bidding process in place. We have uh, Ms. Kroll helping us tonight. She may know if their parking lot is out to bid or what the story is with that. Or the applicant might know. So <laughs> if wants the answer, go right ahead. Just make sure you talk close to the mic. That's a reminder. We're, we are, Berkshire Design is also working on that project, coincidentally, and it is it is out to bid currently. So, yes. Bids are due um, the middle of June. Is it plausible that the work could happen simultaneously? What's... Yeah, Hampshire wants to break ground as soon as possible before winter. So I could see both companies doing major work, but you know, ours would go rather quickly and yours would too. So. I'll comment. I mean, if everything was to happen, then it does appear as though they're both going to happen at the same time and they would happen this year. So, But that's if it all works out. And my next question is the where the current parking is along railroad between the tracks and railroad street, is that town owned property? And is there any plan to uh, fix that up a little bit? So all this great new work on Hampshaw lumber isn't sitting next to that space, like just graveled or something to fix that up a little bit between the tracks and their building. If you want to speak to that from Berkshire Design, or I know yeah. if you look at the layout of the actual property lines, the, the town has room there, and then the railroad does own some property towards there. Right. We we are also working with the town um, as they consider a complete <coughs> grant um, that is looking at um, other portions of Elm Street, and I think this portion of railroad to make some improvements. Um, both, yeah, both along Elm and, and uh, Railroad. So I know we've been in discussion with them about, you know, this lot and, you know, other parking along Elm Street in general. So I know it's uh, it's on the, the horizon anyway. Thank you. And and is there still alongside the building on Railroad Street? Is there any parking? Is that is that where employees park or? Is, and and you know just is at the edge of your property right there, kind of right. before Railroad Street itself begins. Yeah, when they realigned that railroad crossing, they took away all that parking in the front of the store and the side. Oh, okay. Um, so the employees have been parking across on and, this town strip that we're talking about right now. I see. Okay. And I'm about ready to dump some gravel there myself to make it look better. So, <laughs> I was going to say, I assume you have some interest in how it looks, how it feels. You know, yeah. pleasing. So. Okay. Thank you. I, um, I think that the presentation is good, and I'm going to start with um, some conditions that I would like to see incorporated into the special permit if the board sees so fit to grant that. Um, 
I would like the applicant to, I would like the applicant to agree to a 36 month uh, performance um, that the project will be complete in less than 36 months. Um, I know that's a long time. I think you're going to get it done in less than that. Uh, but if not, I want um, the applicant to have to come back. I've seen a couple projects in town that have been approved, not necessarily one approved by this board, others not that have been dragged out for a substantial period of time, or the person hasn't acted on their special permit. And Bob and I have talked about that and the situation that this board was involved in on how to handle that because the change of use didn't happen. And it's, so I think that it's a puts a protection in for the town that if something happens that you have to come back it's 30, that's three years. Um, it's just something that I thought for these larger projects should be a condition. Uh, again, the applicant doesn't have to agree to the condition and we don't have to, and we don't have to finish this tonight either. We can set another date if people have to talk to other people. Um, I would like to ask the applicant to add um, lighting on the existing building on the railroad street side and on the north side of the building and on the um, Leary Lot driveway side of the building consistent with the lighting on the front of the building of a similar style and nature facing down, not facing out to help enhance lighting in the neighborhood. And again, on this 36 month performance doesn't have to be done right away, but it has to be done at some point. Um, I would like to take the applicant's uh, gesture up and put it down as a condition that they're going to maintain the weeds around the property out to the railroad tracks. Um, they're going to move the dumpsters inside their property, inside the fencing uh, and off of railroad street. Um, as well, what else we have here? The dumpster move, lights. And then on 16 there, on their list, I would like to take the applicant as, uh, as he presented that the um, store will closely match and resemble the Greenfield store with similar products as the applicant public hearing and if anybody has any objections to those or wants me to explain my thinking any further please let me know Adam, I have one question so th this new the new town parking lots I'm assuming the town's going to light those I just wonder if additional lighting, even though it's down lighting on a building that's tall, fairly tall, maybe affect the the just the the people next door. That maybe with with lighting on that long driveway and lighting in the parking lot, maybe too much. Okay, we could um, we could do timed lighting too. Um, you know, we could say. Um, that you know at 9 p.m you know your exterior lights go off or we could maybe just say on the railroad street side where there's no lighting and no plans for a parking lot that we we do that i, I definitely understand we don't want to over light it but it yeah oh, timers would be fine but if we hear a complaint that it's you know ridiculously bright till late at night i think we need to deal with that yes sir do we have What's how many lights are going to be on the parking lot? We have that set yet. We uh, along the along this drive lane, there are none because of the narrowness of the strip of land, the sidewalk. And, and I thought there was an inability to run electricity. We've got uh, electricity. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But there's no the town's not installing any lighting on the driveway on that side. Back here. So, so the highest I could see those lights going is probably 10 feet. Right. So not any more than that. Okay. Well, they're not going to light up the sky. They're going to be down light, night, night sky, dark sky. 
Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I'm, I'm comfortable with what you laid out. I like those, um, that set of conditions. And then okay. obviously we'll, we'll add the general, you know, comply with all municipal and state regulations. Uh, Adam, was the 36 months from uh, the issuance of the permit? Right, after it signed off. Any other questions or do we want to close the public hearing and move to take a vote on this or set a new date? I mean, it's I'm fine for another 20 minutes, half an hour. If the rest of the board members are, if people want to take a break, just please ask. I don't want anybody to be uncomfortable. I'm just curious if the applicant is um, comfortable. If we do close the hearing, that means we take a vote tonight. Are you you're comfortable with, with those conditions? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm happy to read, read them back too as well. Okay. Did we hear any kind of timeline for breaking ground on this building? Uh, Chip, or the, the uh, question, it was a little hard to hear in here, but I think it was uh, breaking ground. You want to break ground this construction season, correct? They want to break break ground as soon as possible this construction season. Uh, we got to get through the building permit process, though, of course. I mean, yeah. plans, all that stuff. Okay. okay, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing if if we're good. So moved. Gabby. Okay, Gabby made the motion to close the public hearing. It's been seconded. I'll take a roll call vote on that, Laura. Laura Pantani, yes. David Potter, yes. Adam Sokolowski, yes. Gabby Richard Harrington, yes. Dave Sharp, yes. Okay. So the public hearing is closed. Any discussion against board members, or do you want me to reread the permit and the conditions? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, we do have some public comment that I just want to make sure that we just get on the record here. Uh, from the fire department, project shall comply with all fire prevention general codes and laws. So I'm sure that's pretty familiar with you. And we talked about the condition that you have to comply. No comment from um, the assessors. Uh, looks like we didn't get anybody else's back. Here we go for, okay, we're gonna vote on a special permit. And the applicant issued to the applicant, non-transferable, Hamshaw Deerfield LLC, 16 Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass. The location is for 14 Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass, which also encompasses 16 Elm Street. Uh, it has map 168, lot parcel 121, section 20, Zoning District C1. <clears throat> Proposal is for construction of a new 12,200 square foot building in addition built to adjacent the existing building at 16 Elm Street. The project includes a new <clears throat> subsurface stormwater system to manage the additional impervious area, a new sidewalk connection to six to Elm Street is proposed while the rear of the building will be an extension of the gravel surface next door. New water and sanitary services are also proposed. New site lighting is proposed. Parking requirements will be accommodated on the adjacent public streets. 
So, <clears throat> and that was signed and submitted on April 30th. So back here. So the applicant agrees to the following conditions as part of the special permit. A 36 month performance to completion of work for the special permit. We want the applicant agrees to add similar lighting to the that's as proposed in the front of the building to the other three sides for downward lighting. The applicant agrees to maintain on the public property adjacent Elm Street and Railroad Street, the weeds and uh, area to best keep up the neighborhood. The applicant agrees to move the dumpsters inside the property when the when it's completed. And the applicant agrees the special permit uh, condition that they must file all municipal and state regulations. Okay. Any other discussion or does someone want to make a second? We can second that. Can I ask up a quick question? Sure. Just, I'm sorry. I should have asked it during the rest, uh, but just of the applicant, um, the, uh, South East corner of the building there that you see along the, I don't know if uh, Jeff can put that back up, but you see along the new kind of roadway going in. What, what's the setback on that corner? Southeast, go to the right, go to the Southeast. Uh, well, I wish I had the cursor, but the bottom right corner there is the Southeast corner where it's touching the new driveway going into the back parking. So the property line is actually this solid line here to provide 15 foot or 10 foot setback. The Have town has an easement to use their property for the driveway. It's still their property. Uh, I see. Okay. Okay. I was just in the zoning table. There was something that had, yeah. the, it looked like it went from 10 feet to one, 1. 1.8 feet or something, but I may be reading something incorrectly. Well, I think the it was, uh, issue is yeah. all the answer is that the town got an easement uh, over the property as yeah. the owner for the driveway where if the owner of the property didn't want to allow the easement, then they would have the building and there wouldn't be an access to the parking lot there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just curious, but is that a two lane road? Uh, that is still up for town debate as I understand it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause it looks about the width of for, is 18 feet wide. So it's wide enough for two way traffic. Um, but there's some, I guess, internal discussion about whether it'll be one way yeah. or two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. <clears throat> so, so we've made a motion already. To I, I read over the conditions. I read the permit and we can have a motion to grant the permit as read. I'll make that motion to grant the permit as read. Okay. A second. I'll second it. Okay. That was second by Laura and the motion was made by Dave for the note keepers. Okay, any other discussion? I'm hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote on that to approve. Laura Pontani, yes. David Potter, yes. Adam Sokolowski, yes. Debbie Richard Harrington, yes. Dave Sharp, yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Amy. We'll take care of typing that up and having, it, having me sign it and We'll get that recorded. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank last you. order of business here. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Second by David Potter. They look good to me. Any discussion or... Questions? No. no. They look good to me. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 
Aye. David Potter, aye. Adam Sokolowski, aye. Gabby Richard Harrington, aye. Dave Sharp, aye. Okay. Bob, anything else from you? Thanks for joining no, us. No, no. I'm going to say good night. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right. Okay. I'll take a motion to uh, disband. So meeting. moved. David Potter. All right. Seconded by me. All in favor? All right. I